Thanks, Randy. So did it work out for you? Your hotel tip was spot on. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. But don't just sit there. It's an interactive program, honey. Are you sure this is legal? I don't know. It's fun, though, isn't it? Pick your pleasure. Tweet, chat, post, email, even call us on the telly. Whatever works for you. Our topics today, food, drinks, travel, and a whole lot more fun. So let's pop the cork on this thing and get the party started. Give it up now for our fantastic host, the wonderful and talented Mr. Randy. White. I think that's the champagne talking. And a good morning, everyone. Great to have you starting your day right here on a Saturday with us, talking all things food, wine, craft beer, travel, tourism, uh, all in a healthy and sustainable manner. This is Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. Our goal to make sure at the end of all of this, you walk away with a little more information uh, so you can, you know, be more successful in your endeavors. <laughs> Patty, I don't know if her camera was up, but she was just going like this, like sort of like a happy face. <laughs> Miss uh, Patty Pyburn, co-host to my right here. All right, we are broadcasting live from the Etrick Explorer studio in historic, beautiful downtown San Luis Obispo. It's a little bit uh, gloomy out right now, but I can tell that the sun is really ready to pop through at any moment, which is fine for us because at this time of the morning, it streams right in behind our back and it's not all that uh, comfortable. We are going to take a, well, first of all, downtown San Luis Obispo, it will be the focus of one of our segments coming up this hour. We will take a look at the role of downtown associations and how the one here in San Luis Obispo specifically keeps the area so vibrant. Also ahead on today's program, we'll discuss the best tequila bars in the L.A. area. Still trying to get Javier on the phone this morning. He might have been sampling at one of those bars, and I'm not so sure... (laughs) That's going to come through for us. And then our travel deals segment this week is focused on something, Patty, I'm sure you just dealt with about a month ago, exchanging currencies when you travel to other countries. What's the best way to do it? Use a credit card, uh, take money out of an ATM over in Europe, go to your local bank. There are a lot of different permutations, and we're going to talk to a money expert on that. And then next hour, our compass word, now stay with me on this, our compass word is picket. Not like, you know, out in front of a grocery store. Although we could have focused on that, but... Like the fence? Uh, kind of like picket like the fence. But based on this one word, we will introduce you to the author of the movie Sideways. A very scenic and unique place to vacation for just 40 bucks a night. 360 degree view, too. Wow. And some of the best bagels in the United States. And don't forget, you can catch Eat, Drink, Explore Radio on your Apple or Android device with our handy and free app Lots of people enjoying the video simulcast that way. So hello to everyone right now who's watching us <laughs> via their telephone or, uh, you know, tablet computer. And uh, if you haven't tried it yet, just search Eat, Drink, Explore in the App Store. And it is, we mentioned it already, free. All right. Our sponsor this hour is Eberly Winery in Paso Robles open daily from 10 until 6 o'clock. So you have a couple of hours before they... Before those doors swing open and you can start your Saturday of tasting. (laughs) Uh, But give yourself plenty of time because the cave tours there voted among the best by Wine Spectator magazine. And uh, Everly Winery is located on 46 East in Paso Robles. Keep in mind the Mid-State Fair is in town right now. In fact, uh, one of our producers, Anthony, went and saw Earth, Wind & Fire last night. And I'll tell you what... I. I have had the song September. You know that, do you remember? I can't sing more than that or we have to pay them a royalty. (laughs) But uh, I have had that in my head all day because Anthony had an extra ticket, but... I it would have kept me up way past my bedtime, so this would I didn't not go. Be a good scene. <laughs> no, no, you don't want to see that. Trust me, I've done that before. Anyway, log on to eberlywinery.com, and that is e b e r l e winery.com. So if you're headed up to the Mid State Fair, make Eberly a part of your trip. All right, let's bring in the fabulous, beautiful, lovely Miss Patty Pyburn, more, and more, more. And <laughs> so you you rode the London Eye. I did not. I watched my children do it. Are you afraid of heights? Well, not really, but I'm not a big fan of Ferris wheels because if I think about it too much, I'll freak myself out. There's a couple of things in life that happen that way for me. Roller coasters and Ferris wheels happen to be a few. (laughs) A couple of them. You were working last night for uh, KCOY CBS 12. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to see any of the opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games in London? uh, You have to love TiVo, right? Yeah. So I watched some of it when I got home last night. Oh. 
when I should have been sleeping. Right. But <laughs> we won't talk about what time that was. No, but no, no. I love the Olympics. Yeah. I love it. It's fun, isn't yeah, it? And it was so cool to see London after we had just been there. Right. And mm-hmm. so that kind of brings it on home for you. Yeah. I'm excited about this uh, Ferris wheel. Well, it's a Ferris type wheel that yeah. is going in uh, in Las Vegas. I contacted the people from Caesars Entertainment. Uh, they gave us the artist rendering that we showed oh, during the news. So cool. Yes. And it uh, it will be. And it. It is going to surpass all the other ones by a lot. You know, Vegas always has to do it by... It's, it, everything that's going to get by better lot. is going to get taller, bigger, larger, something. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I wish I had uh, been at a pub in London last night when those opening oh, ceremonies yeah. were going on. And I'll tell you why. I was at a pub in London in 1994 when the World Cup was in the United States. Mm-hmm. And the uh, pub tenders behind the bar... We're going on and on about how the United States, why can't they just let the games begin? They have to bring Do in all of this pomp and circumstance. All this, it's so American. <laughs> well, I think to, there's a little pomp and circumstance. <laughs> Thank you. I was watching those opening ceremonies going, I would love to be in that pub right now and go, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, <laughs> over the topness here right now. Hey, yesterday, instead of watching the opening ceremonies, I went to Costco. It was a ghost town. I like to hit Costco at times when there's that nobody there. That was a strategic move. That was smart. Although, my, I just wasn't thinking. And somewhere <laughs> around the, you know, the walk-in cooler area where they keep yes. the vegetables? Uh-huh. By the way, the Costco in San Luis Obispo has the best vegetable guy in the world. He's always... Oh, I know who you're talking you, about. Right. And he'll sit there yes. and chat it up with you. And yes. talk, no, don't pick those ones. Wait, Use, wait, I have better choices over here. I have here. better choices, yeah. And these will last longer and stuff like that. Yes. I don't know what his name is, but he's fantastic. And if yeah. you work at Costco, you know who I'm talking about. He's a great guy. I got talking to him. And then I went on and I kept shopping. As I, as I got near the checkout, I realized, I looked down in my cart, I'm like, I, I didn't grab the, uh, the, uh, s- that specific salad, you know, and where's, where, where are the, Wait, that where are the Brita I filters I had put in the cart? And then I realized somewhere around, I think when I was talking to him, I switched carts. So half the stuff in the cart was somebody else's and half the- Which means someone else- took your yeah. cart as so it was a double switch and then i had brought my own bags and those were in the other cart. oh no someone out there has your reusable shopping bags? which is perfectly okay with me we have those coming out our ears but uh yeah, yeah they were probably mine <laughs> you know what they probably were <laughs> every time patty comes over to the house for like a dinner or something she brings I have to things in a bag probably one shopping bag <laughs> Right. So, um, yeah. So somebody out there, if you're listening and you happen to uh, have a have, I forget, it was a bank bag of some sort. (laughs) Um, That was mine. And uh, just have it. Keep it. Have at it. (laughs) I'm sorry, Randall, but that's really hilarious. And, you know, this uh, gentleman approached my Prius and was going to get in, but I was sitting in the in the driver's seat and Mm. then he got really flustered and apologized profusely yeah. and then it's awkward he promised me that he owns a prius and even showed it to me across the parking <laughs> lot i said i know i've done it before right. i know <laughs> you do feel that need to like you know i wasn't trying to take your things yeah. <laughs> fortunately there wasn't like a purse in the cart or right. you know oh, and and i realized i had put my iphone in the cart at one point you know and then i realized i had it in my back pocket so, so that was, like, was good <laughs> oh, well, there's a there's a relief. Anyway, there weren't that many people in the story. Probably could have tracked it down if I had had the time or wanted to. So anyway. If you wanted to get my shopping bag back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, stick around, everyone, because up next, Patty and I will continue the conversation, and it is our Get Fit segment. We will talk about some of the different, you know, you always hear it in the gym. Oh, you need to do this or do that but they don't work. And we'll explain what those are straight ahead. Has to do with diet as well. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. I'm Randall White. We're back in just a moment. The Eat, Drink, Explore Radio show is currently in a local commercial break and we'll be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. 
Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat Drink Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat Drink Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. And welcome back, everyone, to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by my fantastic, terrific co-host, Patty Pyburn. <laughs> Does anyone wonder why I show up here every Saturday morning? <laughs> <laughs> Is that too bright? We can close the blinds it during just, the next segment. The sun just broke through. It just broke yes. through our studios here. Uh, we're in the process of getting some gels that'll go over the windows to Woo-hoo. help with that, I'm okay. hoping. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. All right. Uh, hey, have you seen uh, Jordan Sparks lately? You know, the American... American Idol. I have not seen her in a while. Uh-huh. Did she oh, go there. through a post American Idol transformation? She did. Uh, she's lost 50 pounds. Wow. She has a new movie out called Sparkle and uh, actually has gotten some decent reviews mm-hmm. from what I've seen. And of course, it has a soundtrack and all mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But she dropped 50 pounds for the wow. role. And, uh, so everyone wants to know, how'd you do it? What's the special powder that you took? <laughs> it, right. It, what's, the injection. <laughs> what's the magic pill? Uh, yeah. Here's the magic pill. And if I've said this once, I've said it a zillion times. She reduced her portion sizes. She mm-hmm. exercised more. Okay, so and, she ate less, exercised right, more. And chose, you know, healthier. When she did eat, she chose, you know, uh, foods that were... well. One, so, like carrots rather than a ice yeah. cream sundae? One thing, that she ate most of her carbs in the morning. She didn't cut out carbs. Okay. So you can just forget about that cutting out carbs thing. She, uh, she dropped 50 pounds and did not cut out carbs, but she ate most of them in the morning. Because okay. then those are easy energy. You have a chance to use right. that during the day. That makes sense. One thing she ate nearly every day is uh, chicken without the skin, chicken breast. Oh, okay. And I thought you were going to say beer. No? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, don't I wish? Yeah. Darn it. And so uh, we're going to uh, we're I, we need to just come up with a beer diet. <laughs> but that's just I not think my happen. brother's on that one. <laughs> oh, is he? Well, your brother stays thin. I don't know how he does it's that. It's genetics. I, I'm convinced for him, at least, and for a lot of people, too, it's and, genetics. And to some... Speaking of genetics, so I was just going to say, for some people, it is <laughs> genetics. Uh, it comes from that hunter-gatherer time in our background. Yes. A new study is out. Funny you should segue to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm looking at this um, article. It's a little bit lengthy on uh, Healthland time.com and it's about a study that was done to look into why specifically Americans are fatter than we'd like to be but these are researchers from around the world yes uh -huh. yes international researchers and they conducted this study and their focus was a hunter gatherer society that's still living the way they have forever walking for miles every yes. day that um, sort of thing. yeah they really have not uh, changed their lifestyle in possibly centuries according to this article the I hope I'm saying it right, Hadza, Hadza tribe in Tanzania. So the results of the study, just to get to the punchline here, uh, I don't, a lot of people are not going to want to hear it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't, when I read the headline on the newspaper yesterday or the day before, I was like, what? What? Yeah. Well, it's it says the findings contradict popular beliefs about weight management. It is a lot about our genetics. We are not all that much different from each other, really. Mm -hmm. um, they say... We Americans who spend a lot of time sitting at a desk, sitting in a car, sitting on a couch, do not really have a different expenditure in, in energy during the day than a hunter-gatherer of this society. What they said, the problem is, it's what we're eating. It's too packed it, with calories. It's what we're eating. They said the real difference is not the physical exertion. It's your choice of food. That's what they've determined. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say, for all the people who are about to move to uh, Tanzania and right. become hunter-gatherers, <laughs> just skip it. Just think about what you eat. <laughs> well, I was wondering if it's not our genetics, it's their genetics, that their right. genetics have have created a metabolism. Um, imagine how much they would have to hunt and gather if they were burning off all of that energy. Mm -hmm. So maybe their metabolisms have, have slowed. Here, here's the thing. If you take a look at all the people around the world, uh, you know, uh, Asians, people from the U.S., Native Americans, if you mm -hmm. were to do a gene sample from all of those people, we are so close to each other genetically. It is it's surprising. A, just a couple of different things. There's very little variety. However, if you do a gene sample test from people living in Africa... There is huge diversity, and the reason why is, as the theory goes, uh, millions of years ago... The migration, is that what it is? Right. A small group of people migrated out of Africa, and then those people populated the rest of the world. But the people that remained behind were already genetically diverse, and so th that has that remained, remained in Africa. Interesting. So, <clears throat> so I'm wondering if this tribe that they studied mm -hmm. is genetically... And I'm sure they would have looked at this, but the article is so long. I'm not sure that they did look at that aspect of it. Because maybe they're just It was more about different. behavior. Yeah. It was more about the way they live and the way they used, the way they exerted them, themselves throughout the day to get the food that they eat and sustain themselves. So I'm not sure. And it's a lengthy article, but I don't think they spent a ton of time on genetics. You can see that I'm trying to get out of this article because I, <laughs> I don't want it to be I don't. true. I, <laughs> say it isn't so. <laughs> say it isn't so. Not to mention, um, I've worked uh, lap swimming back into my daily routine. Oh, that's good. And as I'm lap swimming, I'm thinking that this is good for me. This allows me mm -hmm. to eat more. You know, I can... Um... <laughs> I can have a sun brownie sundae instead of right. a <laughs> carrot stick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Darn and it. this would fly in the face of that. So yes. uh, that doesn't... You know, <laughs> Sorry, that does, Randall. <laughs> doesn't make me happy, uh, Patty. So I want different... I want different news I read a that. headline that said a local woman <laughs> lost 160 pounds and then the second line was through diet and exercise. And I thought, of course. You know, I wanted to read through the magic pill that you two can buy. <laughs> you know, I am really excited about uh, Nicole Powers is our one of our interns mm -hmm. for the summer, and she'll be delivering the news again uh, next segment. And she has one of her reporter stories that she'll be delivering on uh, the town of El Monte down in uh, Southern oh, California. I heard about this. Uh, Soda tax. And yeah. it's, uh, it's really interesting because there's been so much in the news lately about New, New York, York City. Right. Wanting to ban the big gulps and yes. that sort of thing. Yeah. 
I call. I mean, Seven Eleven. That's their trademark. Big right, gulp, but, but the big giant sodas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it, I can't wait because I haven't. I haven't read it over. I haven't looked over to see the information. Be, so uh, I'm excited to hear. I know that I was in the studio for a little bit while she was interviewing the mayor of El Monte, and so uh, I did hear some of the some of the stuff. But you know what I was doing during that period? Why I why I didn't really look at it? I was roof hopping in downtown San Luis Obispo. I was up on top of some of the roofs, uh, lugging around a bunch of equipment because oh, coming up okay. next segment, we will be speaking with the head of the downtown association. And I wanted to get some video of the farmer's mm-hmm. market. And while we have a great vantage point here in our office, uh, there's a big tree that blocks a lot oh, of the right. farmer's market. Right. So I needed to get up on the on the roof, not our roof, the Really nice people at Urbane Cafe. <laughs> let they me, let you on the roof. They there. let me on the roof. They, I said, I promise. I'm just going up there to shoot Randall's some video. on the roof. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and so uh, uh, I got some fantastic shots. So if you're watching via your iPhone or online, uh, you will be able to see that video. That would be really cool to see. In conjunction. The other thing that she is going to bring up, and I know a lot of people are going to want to hear this, those new smart meters, the parking meters. Yes. There are some rumors, and that's all they are, going around about how they work and stuff like that. How they charge you. She's going to clear all that up, right? Oh, good. Good to know. Because uh, they worked closely with, you know, it is in their best interest to not have people mad about the parking downtown because then yeah. people avoid it. You don't and want the sentiment out there that, oh, it's just too difficult to find a spot to park. I'll, I'll go somewhere else. Right. You know, and let's we have to face it. San Luis Obispo has had a vibrant downtown for decades. Yes. And uh, that's how long this woman's been with the Downtown Association. So she knows a lot about it. Deborah Cash. And, yeah. you know, um, aren't those aren't those um, solar powered? The meters. Oh, I think some of them are. And some do you of know the new ones. Beverly's right here mm-hmm. on uh, High Garrett just switched over to complete solar power. I um, did not know yeah, that. it's a, one oh. of those craft stores. You know, so cool. I know, very cool. All right, well, stick around, everyone, because that's what we have coming up next. How to keep your downtown vibrant, no matter where you live. There's some fantastic information coming up from a woman who knows how to get it done. All right, I'm your host, Randall White. You're listening. Oh, you, you know what? We have a full minute left. I'm like, why is there not a uh, music no playing? Music. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I need one of those lie flat seats on American Airlines right now so I can take a nap during this last minute. Uh, no, hey, so a study came out. I read about it in the New York Times about wine pricing. Yes. And there is a sweet spot. Now, think about it. Where you, If you're buying a bottle when you're going over to someone's house for a mm-hmm. restaurant, how much will you pay? 20 bucks is the sweet spot. Okay. If you can just drop a 20, that is what people consider it's a good wine, but it's a value wine. Right. You know? <laughs> I can do that. Right. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I found that interesting. Uh, and that helped me fill that last 30 seconds there. All right, everyone. Nice. You're, Thank you. <laughs> you're listening to Eat Drink Explore Radio. I'm your host, Randall White. She's Patty Pyburn, and we've got great segments coming up. Stick around. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly.
curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. And a very good Saturday morning to you as you get up and get your weekend started. Lots to do all over the country. We have that beautiful Mediterranean climate really like stuck in place this uh, summer for us here on the Central Coast, which is fantastic because I love the cool foggy nights and then it clears off right around now. What are we at? Uh, 833. (laughs) And uh, the sun's already coming out here in downtown San Luis Obispo. We have a great climate for enjoying our downtowns year round, really. And uh, that includes eating outdoors and all that sort of thing. Somebody who knows how to keep a downtown very vibrant, she's been doing it for an incredibly long time, is Deborah Cash. And she is with the San Luis Obispo Downtown Association. I had a chance to meet her earlier this week because our business is located in the Downtown Assessment District. So they have a new business orientation that I've been trying to attend since November, and I finally hit it uh, this past Wednesday morning. And I learned a lot of information at that meeting, and I thought, you know what? I would love to talk to Deborah about some of the things that I learned there and about an upcoming event that uh, really showcases San Luis Obispo in a great way. So welcome to the program, Deborah. Great to have you here. Thank you, Randall. Good morning. It is a beautiful morning. Isn't it? Yes. And there are plenty of places now in downtown San Luis Obispo where you can grab a breakfast bite outdoors, lunch outdoors, dinner outdoors. When I moved, I, you know, I went to school here in the late 80s and we had outdoor dining then too, but uh, I moved around the country and I realized they don't have as much outdoor dining in other parts of the country as we have here. And a lot of it has to do with the weather. Well, that and also, uh, you know, there's policies in place that kind of make it difficult sometimes Mm -hmm. to build outdoor dining or to seat people on the sidewalks, but that's changing. And so that's why you're seeing more and more of it. And we're really behind that effort to capitalize on being able to be outdoors. I grew up in Hawaii and we ate outside all the time. So, you know, I like, doing that and you're seeing more and more of it and yeah. people even if they put just two tables outside they're starting to spring up all over the place so we think that's great so there's been a project underway for a long time now 
to uh, put in mission sidewalks, they're called, uh, in downtown San Luis Obispo. Is that an effort to widen the sidewalk so that more places can put dining outside? Not necessarily. It is a program underway where uh, the city encourages uh, businesses that do renovations around their their property to do what's called mission style sidewalk. It's that kind of a reddish with the pits in it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually made by salt, pouring salt on the concrete. Oh, really? Do that. It's really interesting. But um, not necessarily for widening. The widening comes in where uh, a business itself sees an opportunity to expand and they actually uh, approach the city for a permit to widen the sidewalk and and uh, pay a fee to do that. So, right. Um, I think it, they're correlated, but they're not the same pro- program. You know that there are a lot of elements that make a downtown inviting, mm-hmm. and one of the elements is to see people there. If you see a ghost town, there, you you don't really want to walk around right. and, and enjoy yeah. the day. Yeah. And we've all been through cities where you drive around and you're like. Where is everybody, you know, and the town seems to be rolled up, you know, Uh, if you see people eating outdoors on the sidewalks and people walking around, that gives it a sense of vibrancy uh, that movement and and movement that then draws more people. It's that crowd mentality. Absolutely. And I think a really good example of that, one that we're trying to be more um, embracing of is if you've ever been to the gas lamp district in san diego oh yeah Uh you know i mean people are all up and down both sides of the street they're eating they're sitting outside they're going into the stores the stores are open open till 11 o'clock at night yeah a lot of them um and it's just very vibrant all night long and so you know we just finished lighting the trees in uh on a section of higuera street in an effort to kind of uh kickstart that idea of let's stay open later let's have people come down and and hang out later and feel safe and comfortable and and just enjoy what we have here so i get that feeling downtown on and and san luis Obispo is not the only town that does it uh but on is it the first friday of every month there's an art art after dark art after dark it's huge boy you can feel the difference right the the number of people walking around and having a good time now what are the rules surrounding art after dark well, uh, that's an arts uh, bispo program, and that's uh, the county arts council, and um, the galleries sign up to participate, and they just do in store uh, activities for that evening, and everyone's mm-hmm. listed on a guide, and so people can just go from gallery to gallery, or even businesses. So it's not necessarily a gallery. There are salons, and there are regular just stores that have art inside that they want people to come in and see. Um, sometimes the artist is there. Sometimes they have food and drink. Um, but yeah, it is just the, the energy it's is, is incredible. And I remember when it started in the, in probably 1998, I want to say, or 97, uh, Josephine Crawford was, um, an, a local artist that kind of launched that program and it was a slow go. Yeah. You know, people don't remember that there were a lot of times where there weren't very many people, you know, doing it. And everything has to start but, somewhere, yeah. you know, and so you start but getting it, it going. But it has taken off. And, That's great. you know, we are very supportive of that program and any type of activity in the downtown that brings people any type of promotion uh, we're supportive of. Yeah, and if it's a warm evening, boy, everybody's out. out. Yeah, yep. it is. <laughs> I love it. Make sure you have reservations wherever you're going to dinner. Yeah, I don't uh, know if you were... Uh, downtown Thursday night for the farmer's market. I was. It was absolutely packed. And there was a guy right down here on his cell phone. And I was walking around taking pictures and I heard him talking to someone and he said, dude, you have to come down here. Dude, you will not believe this. You can't <laughs> believe how many people are here. It's so clean. Well, and so He was like, I wanted to stop right. him and go, can you just sit talking to my cell phone? Right, exactly. I, <laughs> I want to videotape this. You I, know? Well, you just did a very good job. Uh, <laughs> of, in fact, we have video from Thursday night. I went onto oh, the rooftops okay, here and I got some video and out our window, I shot some of the stuff as perfect. well. And let's talk about Thursday night because we, we call it a farmer's market, and everyone knows that listens to this show, we love practically worship farmer's markets, but uh, it didn't start that way. It started as a way to stop uh, car cruising car cruising yeah. around the downtown. Yeah, Don't it was talk definitely about that. back in the late 70s, early 80s. Thursday nights were American Graffiti downtown. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> One of our did. producers exactly. grew up here and says, oh, you, yeah. You were probably in the back seat or something. Right. right? In your parents' car. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anthony was too young to drive, he says. Well, he was in the backseat of his parents' right. car. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they'd head up Marsh and down High Garrett. It was just a continual loop. Continual and loop. what would happen is it was it was such a successful car event that people stayed away. You know, pedestrians stayed away. And so the businesses weren't happy about that. So the solution was to close 
the streets to car cruising. Uh-huh. And the fallout of that was that there were no people and there were no cars. So so some of the merchants sort of set They said, up well, what are we supposed or... to do now? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, the, the downtown association at that time called the BIA uh, came up with the idea of, well, let's put some activity out on the street. The street's closed. Let's do something out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a few barbecues, not like you see today, more like a Weber <laughs> type of a thing, <laughs> right. some hamburgers, you <laughs> know, right. uh, volleyball games, and uh, some vend- or merchants put some tables out on the street. Um, the, a year later, they worked with the Farmers Market Association to bring the farmers uh, as part of that activity. And then it just grew and grew. They had a little entertainment. And that was 1983. So it's you, grown since then. And that program has become a model for cities all over the country. Mm-hmm. Chico, California, if you go there on a Thursday night, you will find almost a cookie cutter edition of what you find here on a Thursday night. And they based it entirely on San Luis Obispo. That's right. We, um, in the mid nineties, we were getting so many people from around the state coming here in, in groups wanting to see our market, see how we did it and emulate it, copy it. And we were fine with that. The more the merrier as far as we're concerned. Yeah. You know, they're a great idea. And it hasn't hurt your market, as you could see from just Not the other night. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up spending so much time with these people, uh, figuring out you know, how it would work for their town. Because everyone has to kind of do it maybe a little bit differently uh, if their weather's different or something like that. But we would spend so much time that we ended up producing a video so we could just give them a video and say here's all the information and yeah. we'll give you support and they would purchase that and we sold hundreds that's and, good you know, and as a far maker. away as scotland and japan wow and, yeah yeah so cool very cool and with anything that grows like that there's always some growing pains and uh there was a period a few years back when the farmers market association and the downtown association were sort of grappling with who was going to manage the market uh in a sense right and then but that all got smoothed yeah. out and everything well, seems to be going yeah, well now it wasn't actually manage the market it was more about just um, our uh, working together the market I and see. our organization and how that f- that fit was making it uh, f- more productive for the for the overall event and, have and we s- have totally worked that out it's right. been fine and you know we just ended up having the market expansion on Morrow Street we've added more farmers added some more entertainment so you know, yeah, there are growing pains sometimes, but then in the end, it worked out for the best. And yeah. so, if you look down there last or Thursday night, you could see you know, and more information to share with other markets because they'll be reaching that point as well. You know, so well, actually, that has happened, mm-hmm. and people have talked to us about that, and and it hasn't always worked out successfully. In some cases, they've gone their separate ways, which is unfortunate. But in our case, it didn't, and it's all worked out. So another great spot that draws a lot of people is Mission Plaza, and we have about a minute left to talk about uh, the taste of San Luis Obispo, which is yes. coming to Mission Plaza, and you're you're changing it a bit this year. Right. Uh, it's, it's This year, it's Wednesday, September 12th, and 6 to 10 in Mission Plaza. It's the 20th year. It's a fabulous event. We have 60 food vendors and, and wine vendors. Uh, people dress up and come and just enjoy a magical evening. We are switching it up a little bit. Um, we're adding non-seated uh, ticket sales where people that just want to come and mingle and not necess- necessarily sit down and go th- have the formal experience. But you'll have bistro tables that can they'll go. They'll have bistro tables and uh, they'll have just as much fun as anybody else. And we have music, live music and dancing. Uh, we have floor show. It's just a really fabulous event. And so because of the, the, the two different types of tickets, there's tiered pricing. And so people can get that information at our website. Which is Downtown slow.com. SLO, downtown SLO.com. I uh, highly recommend you go to that. Once again, downtown San Luis Obispo was a leader in this whole taste of thing. Now you see taste ofs everywhere, but yes. San Luis Obispo was one of the first. Right. And this year, the fund it is a fundraiser, and the funds are going to be applied to the tree lighting project to help pay for that. It wasn't cheap. Fantastic. So we hope that people will come and support that so we can continue that program. But same thing with the concerts. We were the one of the first, and yeah. now there's one on every patch of grass in this county. So we're really proud of that. You know, we didn't get to the smart meters. Can you stick around? We have a little open segment where we sure. can talk about that coming up. But up next, we're talking currency exchange when you travel. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. I'm your host, Randall White. We're back. The Eat, Drink, Explore Radio show is currently in a local commercial break and we will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? 
You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat Drink Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat Drink Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. You've waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. And a very good morning, everyone. Yes, you've waited all week, and this is a fantastic segment we have ahead for you because a lot of us travel and head to uh, other countries where they don't take the U.S. dollar. In some cases, you can still use the U.S. dollar because it's a, a recognized uh, currency that way. Uh, but in most cases, you need to switch it over. And how do you go about doing that? There are lots of different ways. But before we get to that with our guest, Ed Perkins, he's uh, the money man for smartertravel.com. I just want to mention quickly, our last guest, Deborah Cash with the Downtown Association, had so much great information, and we never got to the smart meters. And I do want to point out a few myths that are out there involving the smart meters in San Luis Obispo. This may not apply to your city if you have them as well. One is that when you pull away, if you still have time on the meter, 
It does not wipe clean. The minutes stay there for the next person that pulls in. So Deborah wanted to make that very clear. The other rumor that's going around is that when your meter expires, a text message is sent to the parking enforcement officer so that they can come ticket you right away. (laughs) But she said that that technology exists. They don't have it on these meters. And uh, if you got a ticket immediately following your expiration, that just happened to be bad luck, that the the parking enforcement officer was right there. And their goal is not to punish everyone, uh, that what they're just trying to do is keep a flow of cars in the downtown core. And if you think you need longer term parking to use either the garages or there are some 10 hour spaces and that sort of thing. Uh, so just don't park in a 30 minute zone or, you know, if you if you really need to stay longer than that amount of time. And so she uh, and they and they don't reset. Right. uh, When you pull away. So now I do want to bring Patty Pyburn in on this segment because uh, she just got back from Europe where she had to exchange a lot of money. I'm headed down to Mexico. So I've got some questions of my own. Ed Perkins joins us right now. He is the man that knows all about currency exchange and is with SmarterTravel.com. Great website if you've never checked it out. Welcome to the show, Ed. It's nice to be with you. Oh, thank you so much. I saw a piece in the Sacramento Bee on this topic, and you were one of the quoted people. And I thought, well, we need to get Ed on the show to talk about this. Uh, The last time I went to Europe, and I'm not sure how you went about it, Patty, uh, I went to a bank machine at at a local bank in Europe and just pulled out money like I would at an ATM here. And I was told that 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 and then using my credit card was the best way to get uh, was is how you would get the best rate on exchanges. Would you say that that's true? Yes, I would, definitely. Oh, good. Well, then I got a good rate. <laughs> <laughs> but there there are, however, differences from bank to bank, so you have to be aware of that. And these would be charges just like if you used a bank that wasn't your bank here in the United States, you get slapped with some fees. Exactly. Plus, in some cases, a conversion fee. Oh, okay, to to actually convert the money. So then it seems so funny that it costs you money to exchange money. But uh, I guess, you know, people have to make money somehow, right? <laughs> yeah, and even if you get a bank that uh, has a fairly high uh, charge, uh, you're still better off using plastic than you are going up to a foreign exchange office. Really? So, Patty, when you were over in Europe, did you charge a lot? Well, there was an instance where I couldn't get money out of an ATM, and I did go to one of those exchange offices. And, Ed, I think you're right, because I had to pay their transaction fee, plus the rate the money was going for and all that ended up being more expensive money. Um, With my particular bank, and I learned the hard way, (laughs) they just have a $5 ATM fee for pulling out money. So you should do it so a that was lot better, of it at once. The better way was to go to the ATM. and yeah. It, do you agree, Ed, taking out a larger amount at one time makes that more cost effective? For most banks, yes. Uh, yes. Some banks uh, charge a percentage rather than a flat fee. But for most, in most cases, they charge a flat fee. And a lot of banks don't even charge a flat fee un- under some circumstances. For example, uh, a lot of smaller banks and um, savings institutions and so on. Credit unions? Credit unions uh, do not uh, surcharge foreign exchange. So uh, it's a complicated problem in terms of I can't sit here and rattle off all the bank's uh, charges, but there's plenty of information online, including some of my previous columns, about which banks have the better uh, rates on ATM withdrawals. What about the old school method of walking into your bank prior to your vacation and exchanging your money so that when you get on the plane and land there, you already have it in your wallet? That's not uh, you, you can do that, and but you're going to pay a, be- a worse exchange rate than if you waited till you get to your arrival airport and use an ATM. Wow! And most big international airports now I can't say all, but most big international airports have ATMs. And both Visa and MasterCard have online locators to tell you exactly where in the airport each ATM is located. That's fantastic. What uh, are there countries where the U.S. dollar? I, I would assume. I know. I've seen it happen in Mexico. I assume to some degree on border cities in Canada. Are there other countries that accept the U.S. dollar and you don't need to even exchange your money? 
Well, it's generally true in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the last time I was there, it was true in Israel, but that was several years ago, so I'm not sure now. I know in Mexico, they basically, they simplified in their favor <laughs> yes. the um, the exchange rate to, uh, ten, uh, what, is, what was it, 10%? Or like, like for instance, if, uh, if it said it was 1,000 pesos, uh, then they charged you $100 or $10. I can't remember. But they just, they made it, a, they simplified it when in reality, uh, it should have been more like $8 or nine twenty five or something, you know? So, yeah. They got the extra. They got the extra. <laughs> right, yeah, well, that, that's right. Uh, and this is another, it brings up another issue, which is when you're traveling, say, in Europe, a restaurant or a merchant may offer to make out the charge in dollars, so, quote, you know what it is. Right. But the fact is you're going to pay a double penalty that way because the merchant will give you a lousy exchange rate uh, on the right up to dollars, and then your bank will charge you the foreign surcharge anyhow. Ouch. You know, Ed, you were mentioning um, about using the ATM versus going into your bank ahead of the time. I thought I was being so prepared, and I did go into my bank before my trip, and I was told that I could get the uh, foreign money, the pounds and the euros I needed, had I planned a week in advance and the bank would have ordered them for me. So that little excursion to the bank a few days before my trip... And I thought, oh, I'm going to be ready. <laughs> didn't really work. <laughs> well, yeah, some, it did, it some banks, and, and particularly in a big international city like New York or San Francisco and so on, uh, some retail bank offices will have foreign currency on hand. But uh, in other cases, uh, a typical branch bank uh, may not have any foreign currency in its drawers. So, yes, you have to give them uh, an advance notice. But you really don't need to do that. You're just as well off waiting until you arrive and using an ATM at the airport. Does anyone still do traveler's checks? Right. <laughs> Not to my knowledge. In fact, <laughs> um, I was in Europe a few months back, and I took over some traveler's checks that had been in a drawer someplace for several years. And I thought, what the heck, I'm going to go change these. I had a tough time finding somebody that even wanted to exchange them. Yeah. Well, there was so much fraud associated <laughs> mm -hmm. with traveler's checks for a long time that I think it made people kind of skittish on it. Plus, we've just become so techn technological. Well, I don't use regular checks usually. Now, what do you do with the extra money that you bring back? My son, we got home, and he said, oh, oops, Mom, sorry, I have a 20 euro in my pocket, which is like $30 or something. Yeah, what do you do with that, Ed? It's, you usually have to uh, pay a big penalty to try to uh, exchange small amounts of foreign currency once you get back here. What I do, and what a lot more and more people that I know do, just simply put it in a drawer and wait till your next trip to Europe. It gives you an excuse to travel again. <laughs> <laughs> i got to spend this 20 euro. <laughs> right. Ed Perkins with SmarterTravel.com. You can find all of his columns online. Uh, for this exact topic, Ed, we really appreciate it. Uh, quickly, like in 10 seconds, can you tell us where's the best exchange rate right now if we want to travel somewhere? Uh, well, Europe is pretty good now. The euro's down uh, from about over a dollar forty to around a dollar twenty now. Awesome, that is good. All right, Ed Perkins, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Stick around, everyone. A whole nother hour of Etrick Explore Radio coming up next. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is your lifestyle information source. Our focus, food, wine, craft beer, travel, and tourism trends with a slant towards sustainable and healthy options. Whether it's hot deals or tips for hotels and flights, an update on what's currently fresh at your local farmer's market, or the latest restaurant and beverage news, we've got you covered from 8 to 10 each and every Saturday morning, live on Crush 92.5 in San Luis Obispo County, and online at Eat, Drink, explore.com also check out our new free smartphone and tablet app simply search three words eat drink explore either in google play on your android device or in the app store on your iphone or ipad this free app gives you access to contests past radio segments our facebook and twitter feeds and you can watch live video of the radio broadcast while listening to it here on the crush eat drink explore media your source for the lifestyle you love
It's the top of the hour and time once again for the latest from the Eat, Drink, Explore news desk. Good morning, all you Eat, Drink, Explorers out there. I'm Patty Pyburn. We are looking at what's making news on this glorious Saturday morning. Glorious if you're in California, I suppose. Other parts of the country may be not faring as well in the weather department, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, travelers, U.S. Airways prices are soaring. The airline hit its highest quarterly profit in company history, announcing it more than tripled last year's profits at $306 million. U.S. Airways is moving now to merge with the bankrupt American Airlines that uh, just announced, if you were listening, especially at the top of the uh, 8 o'clock hour, just announced the production of a new luxury fleet of jetliners, allowing you to recline all the way while traveling. A new study shows fluoride in drinking water affects your brain. Harvard researchers reviewed tests on fluoride and brain development and concluded that consumption of fluoride does have negative effects on children's cognitive development, especially their IQ. The study measured the average IQ of children who live in places with high fluoride levels in drinking water, compared those to children living in places with low levels, and it shows the kids in the high fluoride areas had significantly lower IQs than those in the low fluoride areas. And the researchers say more study is needed in this area to look at the long-term effects of this chemical tooth decay deterrent. Pete's Coffee and Tea has a new owner. It's sold on Monday, going for nearly, and this is a bargain, nearly a billion dollars to a private German holding company that owns other well-known brands such as Jimmy Choo. The fast food restaurant Chick-fil-A has taken a strong stance against same-sex marriage, and the controversy sparked a huge response across the nation. Same-sex couples are planning a kiss-in on August 3rd, and some political leaders like Boston Mayor Thomas Menino are also taking their own stance, saying, not in our city. Chick-fil-A has been considering opening in multiple locations in the Boston area, but Mayor Menino says, no way, and that is because of the chain's stance on same-sex marriage. All right, we are checking in with Miss Nicole Powers on this Saturday morning. And you, Nicole, this is an interesting story. I saw this yesterday, this proposed soda tax right here in a California city. Yeah, thanks, Patty. Uh, the citizens of El Monte, California, will be voting on this proposed soda tax in November. And the tax would be placed upon businesses who would then be likely to put higher prices on the consumers. And this is what the mayor had to say. Let's see. Oops didn't have our news sound open quite yet. Oh. I don't think it's Do we here. have a technical Looks difficulty like it's here? It's not in here, unfortunately. So, uh the mayor Bummer. had a response to He did. You, in in the sound bite, he said that um 50% of young people in their city are obese. And so this is especially important for health reasons um, and also to bring in revenue for the city. Um, he said that the revenue from the tax could be used for running their aquatic center, which costs about $600,000 a year to run. He said it's a state-of-the-art center, so this is something that's important to them. They've also thought about buying exercise equipment. There's not any mainstream gyms in the area, so that would be something that they could look into. Also, the tax could be the revenue could be used for paving unsafe roads so that kids could walk safely to school. Um, he also mentioned last year in El Monte they banned soda and sugary drinks in their recreation and parks facilities. So this is an ongoing effort of the city and the people of El Monte to make healthier lifestyle choices. And he also said the tax is a general tax, so it wouldn't be marked necessarily for health reasons, but they will be using it in those ways, and the citizens will have a chance to vote on where they use it. All right, interesting. We'll have to watch and see what happens there with that sugar tax. You know, New York City has been out in front on some of these food issues. You know, they pushed for uh, healthier choices in oil for restaurants that do fried foods. Mm -hmm. Recently, there was the uh, soda controversy in New York City. Right, where in New York. The mayor was pushing for um, limiting sizes, <coughs> portion control. Um, maybe a, a tax is a, a different approach. Rather than saying you can't buy a super size, you can just pay a little tax right, into right. Uh, <laughs> maybe offsetting some of the uh, results of too much sugar in your diet. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick look at the weather. Nicole, thank you for that. You, and if you are lucky enough to be here in California, you're probably enjoying a beautiful day. But we've got some heat expected across the southern and central plains and much of the mid portion of the country. We're back with more from Randall.
Eat, Drink, Explore Media is your lifestyle information source. Our focus, food, wine, craft beer, travel, and tourism trends with a slant towards sustainable and healthy options. Whether it's hot deals or tips for hotels and flights, an update on what's currently fresh at your local farmer's market, or the latest restaurant and beverage news, we've got you covered from 8 to 10 each and every Saturday morning. Live on Crush 92.5 in San Luis Obispo County and online at Eat, Drink, DrinkExplore.com. Also, check out our new free smartphone and tablet app. Simply search three words, Eat, Drink, Explore, either in Google Play on your Android device or in the App Store on your iPhone or iPad. This free app gives you access to contests, past radio segments, our Facebook and Twitter feeds, and you can watch live video of the radio broadcast while listening to it here on The Crush. Eat, Drink, Explore Media, your source for the lifestyle you love. Delicious, nutritious, and fabulously fun. Is this real life? Best of all, your comments. That was a real money saver. Thanks, Randall. So did it work out for you? Your hotel tip was spot on. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. But don't just sit there. It's an interactive program, honey. Are you sure this is legal? I don't know. It's fun, though, isn't it? Pick your pleasure. Tweet, chat, post, email, even call us on the telly. Whatever works for you. Our topics today, food, drinks, travel, and a whole lot more fun. So let's pop the cork on this thing and get the party started. Give it up now for our fantastic host, the wonderful and talented Mr. Randall White. I think that's the champagne talking. And a very good morning, everyone. Glad you can join us here for the second hour of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are coming to you live from downtown San Luis Obispo, right in the heart of all the action, right above the Pete's Coffee, that if you were listening to the uh, news just recently, uh, Patty, there was, if you were watching us uh, with your you know, iPad or whatever, uh, there was a picture we showed, and that Pete's Coffee is directly below us. Right below us. We smell yummy, fresh brewed coffee all the time. Now, you know what's interesting, I think, about that story is the founders of Pete's Coffee started up in the Bay Area, Berkeley. Mm -hmm. They trained the people who started Starbucks. (laughs) So Pete's has been around longer than Starbucks. and uh, That's interesting. Not as large as Starbucks, Mm -hmm. but here in California, you see quite a few Pete's Coffee. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. And I think they just, uh, they've expanded recently and now being bought by this German company. A billion bucks is not a small price tag, so that's quite a larger company than you might suspect. Yeah, I love my Pete's Coffee, I have to admit. In fact, I loved my Pete's Coffee this morning. Thank you, Anthony. (laughs) Right, thank you, Anthony. Not to be a commercial, but they're directly below us. I mean, it's uh, it's a (laughs) no-brainer. Right. Okay, so uh, this hour of the show is dictated by something we call a compass word. Mm -hmm. The second hour is always the compass word hour. It's essentially a word that inspires us to find things we might not otherwise look for, right? So uh, this week, the word is picket. Picket. Okay. okay. Yeah. P I C K E T T. Okay. And we're going to look into the etymology of the word picket uh, in just a moment. <laughs> and <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> right. But based on that one word, uh, we are <clears throat> we. These are the different things that we've found for this hour. We are taking you to a scenic, remote unique place with a 360 degree beautiful view and it's just forty dollars a night wow yeah so can't wait to hear where that is exactly we will also introduce you to the author of the academy award winning winning film sideways it is now a theatrical play running sold out on just about every night in the la area and uh, every single show ends with a wine tasting. And oh, there's, no wonder it's sold out. <laughs> I, and here's the other thing. There's no, you know how sometimes they'll limit it to just that little tiny bit in your glass? There's no limit on the pouring there. Oh. Yeah. So uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> no wonder it's sold out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets sideways, okay? And then uh, also <laughs> we will be talking about a spot here in the United States that is known for possibly some of the best bagels in the United States. Mm. All of that based on the word picket. We need to let you know that this hour of Eat, Drink, Explorer Radio is brought to you by Kelly's at the Grill at Hunter Ranch Golf Course. I ran out of time last hour to remind you of that at the end of the show, so I'm going to spend a little extra time telling you about how awesome Kelly's is. And I know that the Mid-State Fair is taking place right now. Lots of you listening headed up to the Paso Robles region uh, to partake in the Mm -hmm. Mid-State Fair. Maybe you're going to see a great band like Earth, Wind & Fire last night, one of my favorites. 
But uh, do yourself a favor, head out 46 East, just about three miles is all, and uh, you will find Kelly's at the Grill at Hunter Ranch Golf Course right there. You don't have to do any golfing if you don't want. Just pull in. They have a fantastic brunch on Sunday mornings, so you can consider that, and it is bottomless champagne. Mm. Uh, Just might throw that out there for you. (laughs) A happy hour every single day of the week from 3 until 6, and dinner is served uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So today's a Saturday, so you can certainly have your dinner there as well. It is such a relaxing, beautiful setting to just look out over the rolling hills of the Paso Robles countryside. You will be like, how did I not know this was here? That's what you're <laughs> going to ask yourself. It is Kelly's at the Grill at Hunter Ranch Golf Course. Do yourself a favor. Go check it out. Okay, let's talk about the the compass word for this hour, Patty. I can't wait to hear how you connect <laughs> all these dots with right. the word picket. <laughs> okay, first of all, it was I have to say, this was one of the more difficult challenges I've had. I used it because I I knew we were going to have Rex Pickett on the show. Rex is the author of Sideways. <laughs> and so, you didn't go with Rex, you went with Pickett. Yes, and I thought... <laughs> Uh, you're right, Rex. That might have actually been kind of easy. Next uh, week. <laughs> and I was like, sideways? I'm not going to find... You know, that'll be difficult. I'm not going to use sideways. It would just all be about the movie and the play. Right, you know? <laughs> and so then I thought, um, well, what about Pickett? So I started searching, and I found a great second guest. It was okay. the third guest that took me forever to find using the word Pickett. Oh, really? <laughs> and so, uh, and that turned out to be the bagel one, which I think is going to be oh. one of our, our best guests. But... Uh, and when I started looking into the word picket, I realized that uh, it it's a last name that comes from the German word pick, P-I-C, which means a sharp point. Okay. So you were asking if it's picket fence. Right. You know those why it's called a picket fence? Is because of the point at the e- top of well, the picket? Right. Each one of those little pieces that make up the fence, those are called pickets. And uh, they're called pickets because they're pointed, which I never thought about. (laughs) Then if you take a look at how that word... uh, Like a picket line? A picket line. You use pickets with With a sign on it. With a sign on Mm -hmm. it, right? And then in other languages, you have uh, like in French, it's picot. It's P-I-C-O-T-T. Okay. Like pico kind of. Uh Uh-huh. Well, pico. It, ex- you're exactly right. In <laughs> Spanish, pico means point or beak. You mm-hmm. know, like a chicken's beak is right. pointed. And if you've ever had pico de gallo, it actually means the beak of the chicken, which doesn't really translate into what you're eating. But no. uh, salsa, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. uh, if you think of an ice pick, it's that point- makes perfect it's pointed, sense. right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, I. I'm such a word geek when it comes to things like I'm that. I'm kind of like you in that sense, too. And I love to know the origins of why do we call certain things certain right. things. Well, uh, mm-hmm. picante means hot and spicy mm-hmm. or sharp, you know, I think oh, is where they okay. where that came from. Um, also, in uh, music, I, I think like there's like a uh, something that has that same where it's sharp and pointed, the music, and it's like picante. P- something with a P I C. Oh, I wish my son was here. He it might know. even be picante. <laughs> picante. I'm not sure. Let us know. But tweet in us Italian. if you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, at any rate, uh, our guests will all be tied together with that. Uh, and and at, I'm impressed. At one point, I was going to venture out and use the word pico instead for our third mm-hmm. guest, but no, I found all three of you them are got. Picket and bagel. With I'm the same so spelling. hungry right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. I like how you did that with that one word. Picket. One word. Very nice. Next week's word is far easier. It's cat. And so I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I it'll be uh, it'll be a cakewalk to do yeah. a next week's uh, word. But <laughs> <laughs> the cat's meow. <laughs> yes. Also, next week during our get fit segment, which is exactly an hour earlier from where we are right now, uh, we will have the chief researcher from the University of Florida who just issued a study. She's on vacation, which is why we didn't have her this week. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they issued the study on the week she's on vacation, but. <laughs> At any, at any rate, uh, <laughs> she is uh, it, those chemicals that you find in red wine and dark chocolate. All, they're almost like magical mm. chemicals. I knew I was eating them for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, she has some of the reasoning behind all of that. And so that's next week. Let's face it, we don't need a reason, but I can't wait to hear. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Okay, stick around, everyone. 
Our discussion with Rex Pickett, author of the hit film Sideways, is coming up next. He'll be discussing his new play version of the show and uh, also the wine tasting that accompanies that. <laughs> Lots of fun just down the road from us in the L.A. area. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. We're back in a moment. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. And a very, very good Saturday morning, everyone, as we broadcast the Eat, Drink, Explore radio show to you live from downtown San Luis Obispo. Another beautiful day out there. The sun is shining and lots of wine tasting to be had along the Central Coast, I'm sure. Uh, there will be people 
heading to wineries in Santa Barbara County asking mm-hmm. for Pinot uh, <laughs> wine and not Merlot. And no Merlot. <laughs> <laughs> poor Merlot. I know, poor Mer- Merlot. I'll, never before has one film changed the landscape of how wine is marketed in one region of the country than Sideways. Boy, that really <laughs> was a landmark film. For those of us that live in the area, we know that there are Sideways tasting maps. You know, yeah. you walk into places in Los Olivos, there are pictures on the wall of, uh, you know, scenes shot at a particular mm-hmm. restaurant or bar or what have you. And uh, yeah, Sideways, it, it is a huge film. And now it is a huge play that is uh, perf- that is still running right now through mid-August, and the shows have been sold out, which is exciting. We have on the line with us right now Rex Pickett. He's the author of Sideways, and he is venturing into an area he had not done before, which is plays. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the program, Rex. Thanks for having me. I'm a- you must be so excited that the show keeps selling out. Well, it's great. I mean, with no advertising, it's a small theater. It only holds 55 people, although the stage is actually larger than you think. And it's a very reputable theater. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's been, we're in our 12th sold out week. Um, I was up there last night, you know, I was pouring wine last night. We, that's the, it's one of the best kept secrets in LA because we, we pour high end Pinot Noir and some other wines too um, from a different winemaker or winery every performance for free in proper retail seminars. I don't think it's ever been done in theater, ever, anytime, anywhere in the history of theater. And it's, how often do you have the author there pouring the right. wine? <laughs> That's it's, definitely... I actually it. really enjoy it. It's in my neighborhood. I, I live in Santa Monica, so it's only it's right by the Santa Monica Airport, the Ruskin Group Theater, right by the Santa Monica Airport. And it's just a real joy. I mean, the play's a hit. It's a, people come out loving it, and, and I enjoy pouring before and we also poured intermission and you know we can't allow the beautiful stemware into the theater course because if one breaks it's going to destroy the whole play but so we but we allow you in plastic cups to take it in and it's just a real joy to see the people and we're going to go much bigger we're going to go the next um uh, we're already in talks with uh, a 700 acre vineyard property in sonoma overlooking the russian river by santa rosa and we're going to build a 250 seat theater inside a barrel room Wow. Really? Wh- which uh, property is that? Can I you say? I, I can't disclose <laughs> it. I mean, we're, we're leaving. We're leaving a week from today, and it's it's actually only about five miles from east of Santa Rosa, but it's in the Russian River, and which makes it kind of accessible to a lot of people. Yes. And, you know, people say, "Well, why don't you go to San Inez or Central Coast?" And the problem is, is we would be dependent on that Southern California traffic to come up there because the rest of the time, it's um, they probably wouldn't support a two hundred fifty seat theater. You know, four or five nights a week. I could be wrong, but Sonoma is huge with the two international airports and the, and the huge city in the Bay Area. So it's a natural, but the people in Central Coast can come down and see it. We're extended through August 12th, but, you know, hush, hush, it's probably going to get extended. <laughs> because we're no. not going to be able to do Sonoma until late March, early April, January and February bed, and we need the PR lead time. Right. So they'll keep, they'll keep running it here as long. They don't announce extensions usually until, you know, a couple weeks before. I wouldn't count on it, but... You know, it, it's, it really is one of the best-kept secrets, but it, it, the event part of it, you know, wouldn't work if the theatrical part didn't. And it really delivers on another level, and the critics have been, you know, raving about it. And there's only, so only so many times you can see the DVD, you know, come see it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, Rex, it sounds like such an intimate setting. You said only about 55 people in the audience, and you're there pouring wine. So it, that that's such a huge part of the experience with this Sonoma venue. Are you going to continue the, the wine pouring aspect? Well, I don't know. I mean, to me with, with this play, everything, every day has been a different day and every day I'm, I'm, you know, faced with new decisions and challenges. I mean, it just, it just so happened this week. We, we had the, the woman who was handling all the wines. Um, we, we, she didn't really realize about the extension. So it kind of came through last moment. She sent us a bunch of wines. And so I'm, I was kind of left to pour. Usually the winemakers almost always come down and pour for free. They, we don't charge anybody. It's, it's, you could come there on some nights. Well, one night we were pouring Gary Farrell's Elysian Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. You could have come there and drank at least a glass, maybe more, and gone home and not seen the plane broken even on the $25. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking. It's just, but, you know, people are loving the play because the play is a... Um, yeah, I mean, for Sonoma, I mean, I'll get up there and do PR, but no, I won't be pouring every night. That's just not, that I, can't happen. And there could come a point, because the play is a lot bigger than I thought, and there are some things that are in the works that I can't talk about, but this play could, ostensibly, a year from now, could be playing in New York 
Berlin, London, London for sure. You know, they've been requesting it big time. Um, you know, and, and, and a lot of it has been Twitter. I got on Twitter about 10 months ago, and I really exploded, and a lot of things have come about as a result of that. That's and, how I found you. Yeah. No, it's true. A lot of people... It's been, uh, Twitter has been a real blessing for me. It's, it's proven... You know, I mean, I, I've sort of in the past... When the movie came out, I got thrown under the bus. It was all about the director and the producer and the actors and whatever. You know, and then, you know, it, it's... It, to me... I, the, what's been wonderful about the play is they recognize that there really is a novel behind the movie. The novel is a personal novel, and that uh, you know I'm getting a lot of recognition. But I had to get out there and you know push it in some way. And Twitter has really proven to me the power of the brand because you know I'm with 27,000 followers in just eight months, and it's growing. And I, I get so much love from so many people, you know, that it's um, and and like you said, that's how you found me. That's how I get a lot of interviews and. Other things. I mean, I, I really don't need someone to do PR. I pretty much do it myself. And so, you know, we're just, it's just, just, it's a real joy. It's one of the most rewarding creative joys of my life. I mean, if the play had been a bomb, maybe, you know, I wouldn't be saying that. But it's just a real big, <laughs> All right. it's just wonderful to see everyone out there, you know, 30 minutes before the play with a beautiful Pinot Noir glass sipping high end wine. I for love free. it. We're speaking yeah. with Rex Pickett. He's the author of the novel Sideways. I'm curious, Rex, how similar is the play to the movie? Well, the, the movie is very faithful to the novel, but the play is even more faithful to the novel. I can't use anything in the movie that wasn't in the novel, but when I went back and read the novel after seven years of not looking at it, um, there wasn't anything in the movie I didn't want to use. I mean, Alexander Payne, uh, who directed the movie and co-wrote it with his partner, Jim Taylor, he, you know, he had his take on it. It's very faithful. I love it. There wouldn't be a play if there wasn't a movie. There wouldn't be all this excitement. I wouldn't be talking to you if it was only a novel. That's a fact. You know, so I, I want to give credit where credit is due. But he definitely saw the characters as more pathetic than I did. In fact, he even told me that when I first met him. He said, you know, Rex, what I loved about your novel so much, your characters are so effing pathetic. He, he said it just like that. <laughs> I thought, my God, you're talking about me. You know? <laughs> He, he kind of told me to, he told me to, hey, stop saying that, stop saying it, it makes me look back. I said, well, that's what you told me, Alexander, it was the first thing you said to me. He did, I mean, like Jack, for example, in the movie, he's 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 more of a remorseless, sex-crazed Terminator than he is in the play, and in the book, he's got more heart and more soul. Oh. He has cheats on his fiance and all that, but he's got more heart and soul, I think. The play is, it, it, it cuts emotionally a little deeper without giving away certain things that are faithful to the novel. It, it, it goes in some places that are outside Alexander Payne's comfort zone, I think. Um, you know, it's, the, the ending is, is more closer, is, 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 is the ending of the novel, which is more redemptive than the knock-on-the-door ending. And, and again, don't get me wrong, I love the movie. It's a fantastic movie. It's done a lot for me. But the play cuts deeper into my novel, and it's, it's more searching, and it's more emotional, and it's really raucously funny. I mean, it, you know, and here's the other difference, too. In the movie, Paul Giamatti is Miles. He's, he, you laugh at him, but you never really laugh at anything he says. If you go back and look at it, you'll see that. In the book and in the play, Miles is a funny guy. He says funny off-the-wall stuff. And, um, and that, that there's, something, there's something different there with his character, too. It's, it's a different, rewarding experience. I have, there are a lot of people who come out. I'm there every night when they come out who tell me they like it better than the movie. I'm not joking, you know. I'm not, yeah. not going to go on record saying that. To me, it's a different experience. It's like the characters came out of the two-dimensional screen and, and are now in your living room. But um, it's, you know, I, you know, it's just been a really rewarding experience. It's like a family over there. I'm, I'm really... really Rex, I'm really looking for. I hope it gets extended and extended because I'm headed <laughs> yeah. to Santa Rosa this weekend, so I can't go to L.A. this weekend. But in August, at some point, I want to head down there. Can't wait to uh, share a glass of Pinot with you and check out the movie. Rex Pickett, author of the book Sideways, also Vertical. We should mention that. All of the links to the theater and such are available online at eatdrinkexplore.com. Rex, thank you so much for being on today. Oh, all right, I think we lost him right at the end there, but uh, it was a great interview. Perfect timing. We're back in just a moment with a getaway that's just 40 bucks a night. Stick around. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break, and we'll be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? 
You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat Drink Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat Drink Explore. The Eat Drink Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat Drink Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat Drink Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. Welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Here now is your fabulous host, Mr. Randall White. And a happy, happy Saturday morning to you as always. We're glad you could join us as we discuss all things food, wine, craft beer, travel, and tourism. Our compass word for this hour is picket. And if you're watching our video right now, I think I just heard our producer Nicole over here say, uh, oh no, it still says bubble from last week. Oh, but we got we switched it to picket. Good. Okay, so <laughs> it does say picket, and if you're wondering what a compass word is, it's basically we use one word to find uh, something we can talk about that falls into the eat category, something for the drink category, and something for explore. And this segment happens to be explore, and if you head up I-5 into Oregon from California— and you pass Ashland and Medford, and I 
believe you even pass uh, Grant's Pass, uh, you will find a place called the Picket Butte Lookout. You know those uh, fire lookouts that are on the top of mountains that uh, are typically staffed with, uh, you know, someone from uh, the, well, I'm not sure who they staff them with, but we'll find that out in just a moment. <laughs> anyway, they're looking for smoke on the horizon so that they can catch fires before they spread completely out of control. Donna Owens is the Tiller District Ranger for the Umpqua National Forest there in Oregon, and she's going to talk a bit about the Picket Butte Lookout. You can book it and stay the night there. Uh, welcome, Donna. Thank you. Great to have you on the program. When I found this place, I thought, okay, that could be one of the most unique getaways uh, ever. Uh, is it sold out? Like, is it hard to find an open night to get this uh, place? Well, Picket Butte is actually available all year long. So if you're brave and you want to go in the more of the off season, you'll you'll probably be able to get a reservation. Um, in the summertime, it's a little bit harder. I see. And I did notice we're showing a video that uh, someone from YouTube was nice enough to let us uh used for the purposes of this uh, segment, and I noticed that there's a heater in there, so it is heated, correct? It is. It has. Um, it even has a refrigerator. Um, it's powered by propane, and um, there's some propane lights and uh, a refrigerator, a very small one, and a heater. And there's a, a single bed, right? But you could, it, is there space to put like a mattress on the floor, like an air mattress on the floor or something so that more than one person could stay the night? Yeah, we actually uh, limit the uh, number of people to four, but it, um, so one person can get the, there is a mattress that's, um, when when we use it as a lookout, and we still do when we have, um, you know, like a big lightning storm or something, we'll actually go up and staff it if we can with our with our guests up there. Um, why, why, we, is the, why is the lookout currently not solely used for that do you have other ways to monitor the forest yeah we've gotten um we have air re air reconnaissance we also have um in this county um we have aerial detection cameras on some sites I which see. um overlap you know kind of the view sheds so um we 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 actually had it staffed last summer and um it's it's um it's kind of one of those things that Unfortunately, um, we have other kind of technology that helps us detect fires. So yeah. I say unfortunately because it's it's really part of our history. You know that we've we've always had these um, lookouts. Look, staff. These lookouts. And now I happened upon the Picket Butte lookout because of our uh, compass word called Picket. So I was doing extensive googling and I found it that way. But I assume there are many of these. Are there other ones there in Oregon where you can rent them the, uh, for the night the way you would the Picket Butte Lookout? Yes, yes. We have another one on the Tiller Ranger District called Acker, A-C-K-E-R, Okay. which is also a, oh man, that's a fabulous site. Um, it's the lookout itself. It, the cab is actually lodged in a rock, um, and uh, it's about a four-tenths of a mile hike in. You can't drive to it. You have to hike in. Oh, and, I see. Uh, it's you, a, you it's can drive to fabulous the, place. You can drive to the Picket Butte one, but this other one you're mentioning, you have to hike to. Yeah, yeah. But Picket, you can walk, to, I mean, drive to, and then um, it's, you know, you've got to climb the climb up the cab, which is, it's a 40-foot tower. Um, I think I think my co-host Patty Pyburn might have a question, and Anthony's going to slide up your uh, volume I, there. I, I'm sorry, I'm over here mouthing and using sign language to try to <laughs> <laughs> tell Randall. So I'm just curious because it's a, a Ranger lookout. What the amenities are? Wireless internet, uh, TiVo, <laughs> phone, satellite, <Zero>. radio. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> you know, I didn't try when I was up there to see if my cell phone worked in Tiller, where our ranger station is. We have no cell coverage. Um, and we have um, satellite um, for our personal residences here, for um, people that work at the, that live on the ranger station. We use um, satellite for our internet, for our personal internet. I see. So I did not try my cell phone, but I know at Acker Rock my cell phone works because I've actually made a call from there before. So this is um, a place if you really want to be secluded, get away from it all, don't check your email, this is the place to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, and like I said, you may get a signal. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe. Well, that, that's good for emergencies, you know, if you could uh, yeah. if you could at least have a signal. You won't get a data signal, though, if you want to, like, uh, <laughs> use your smartphone. So um, we're speaking with Donna Owens. She is the Tiller District Ranger for the Umpqua National Forest there in Oregon, talking about the Picket Butte Lookout, one of several lookouts through the Forest Service. And I, I know there's at least one in California because I had seen it years ago and was thinking that I wanted to do it. Uh, so if you've never thought about renting a lookout for the night, uh, just by definition, it has a great view, right, Donna? Oh, fabulous. Yes. Yes. And uh, so it's, is it, do I have the information correct? It's still $40 a night? Correct. Yes. Uh, okay. So it's $40. <laughs> what a deal. A, that is a deal. So how do you sign up for this? Is it something where you, uh, you give the Ranger District a call or you can do it online or? You can do it online. We have a reservation system. It's through, um, actually, it's a national reservation system for all uh, the Forest Service. Is it Reserve um, America? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. It's, um, let's see. Let me make sure. www.recreation.gov. Okay. So that's nice and simple. And there, I imagine you can uh, sort them out and pick the lookout closest to you or maybe <laughs> farthest from you. I don't know. Right. Where, yeah. <laughs> depending on where you want to go. Farthest from your family. <laughs> now, in some cases, I imagine there are trails leaving directly from the lookout. There at the Picket Butte lookout, though, uh, you need to travel a distance, a short distance to get to some of the trails in the National Forest, right? You do. Um, the, there's a road that um, you can drive, like I said, right up to it. And then to access other trail opportunities, you'll probably have to come down uh, to the... There's certainly You can certainly self-explore from the from the lookout itself. Um, and I didn't mention also that the toilet facilities are an outhouse. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it was probably something along those lines, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, there is um, uh, the beautiful South Umpqua River is not very far away, and also Jackson Creek are two beautiful um, streams that um, it's really interesting. We're in the mode of salmon restoration here, mm -hmm. and so there is no fishing along those stretches of the river. But if you come closer to Tiller, um, there is a stretch where you can fish, um, and there's a, a campground called 3C that has a uh, uh, day use area where you can swim, and there's other swimming holes along the, uh, along the river. Is that mostly snow melt water? Um, there's springs that also, um, it's snow melt and springs. Okay, that the springs that feed the rivers as well, so uh, yeah. it's not as not as cold as it might sound. <laughs> there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of um, water on the Tiller Ranger District and the Umpqua National Forest, for that matter. Um, so... so uh, Donna, I used to live in Ashland. I used to do the news, actually, for KNTV uh uh, Channel 10, I believe it is, out of uh, Medford, Oregon. Okay. Has, has it been that long that I'm having that a hard time remember remembering? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how, how far are you from Medford? We're, um, if you come to the Tiller Trail Highway, so you're heading to Crater Lake oh, on, yeah. mm -hmm. on Highway 62, and then you take the Tiller Trail Highway at the big community of Trail after you pass Shady Cove. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love these names. <laughs> It's about 20, uh, 26 miles from that junction off of 62. It took you about an hour and 15 minutes from Medford to get okay. to Tiller. And then it'll take you another, oh, about just about a half hour probably to get up to the lookout. Um, well, you do have to go through a locked gate and you get the code. Uh, it's a combination lock and you'll get that code when you make your reservation. I see. And so by the time you get out of your car and get the gate, open and then locked again and then you get up to the lookout and all it's probably going to take you about 40 minutes to get to the lookout from tiller one thing i noticed from the youtube video that uh we're showing currently is you're so far away from city lights that you can see the stars in a way that you certainly don't see them where we currently live and, and it is uh, just you can see the milky way it's amazing it is amazing it, it is amazing um and the beautiful thing about being at the lookout is you're you're above the trees and so it's and it's pretty incredible yeah i just i love the idea and this is what i love about our compass word is i i stumbled on something that i didn't know about you know and right. so uh now we <laughs> who knew we get to check it out exactly uh donna i certainly appreciate you joining us this morning on the show to talk a bit about the uh picket 
Butte Lookout <laughs> there in the Tiller District of the Umpqua National Forest. I have all that correct, right? I'm you not... do. You're okay, very good. good. <laughs> very nice. Uh, I love it. And uh, hopefully uh, we can... Is it one of these uh, programs that the district has that um, the more it's rented, the... Uh, helps generate it funds. helps generate funds. Yes, it does. Um, all the money that we collect for the rental goes back into the facility. Good. Excellent. Donna, yes. thank you so much. Make it a great weekend and enjoy your summer, okay? My pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Well, stick around, everyone, because we are headed to a restaurant for our final segment here on Eat, Drink, Explore Radio on this Saturday, said to have some of the best bagels in the United States, Patty. Yeah. I'm so hungry. <laughs> I read about it in the New York Times, mm, Boston.com, uh, and also a great website called Eater highlighted this place. Uh, highlighted this place? Yeah, mm-hmm. for their bagels. We'll talk about that coming up in just a moment. What makes a perfect bagel? Right. One that would be in front of me. That would be a, a <laughs> more perfect, right? You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are back in just a moment. <laughs> The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. 
Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat Drink Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat Drink Explore. Good morning, everyone. You are listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio on this fabulous Saturday morning. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Pyburn to my right here, who brings you the news at the top of each hour and also helps me get through some of these segments. (laughs) (laughs) And also happens to be starving right now. Starving and a bagel (laughs) lover, which Mm -hmm. uh, brings us to our compass word for this final segment of the second hour, picket. And I was telling you, Patty, at the beginning of the show that I had no problem with the first picket because that's how I came up with the compass word, and that's Rex picket. Who the author of the novel Sideways, mm-hmm. and uh, he was a great guest, wasn't he? Oh yeah, full of information. What a great, great thing they have going on with that play and the wine tasting after. <laughs> yeah, the wine tasting underlined right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, boy, it sounds like there's. It sounds like you have a full glass the entire play. No wonder it's sold out. And then, uh, and then we just went up to Oregon for what I think would be one of the most unique oh vacations gosh. to spend Amazing. it in an old fire lookout. Right, yeah. Picket Butte Overlook. Well, then I tried to find a food category. You know, because we are eat drink explore right, yeah and i was searching picket everything you can imagine <laughs> and i was almost thinking am i gonna have to change the word you know <laughs> but no then all of a sudden i stumbled upon an article in eater if you've ever been to eater.com it's a great website mm-hmm. and uh, also one through the new york times both of them praising the bagels made at one cafe in south portland maine as being some of the best in the northeast and that wow, says a lot because that, that's sort of the home of the bagel that is saying something that's right so the founder of this place it <laughs> i love the name of this restaurant 158 picket street cafe <laughs> that's the address and the name <laughs> It's one of those things everyone must know. Exactly. Josh Pataki. He is the owner and founder of that place and now live on our show. Welcome, Josh. Thanks. Great to have you here. And uh, so most people would just assume, because you live there in the Northeast, that that's where you got your start making bagels. But, Patty? I'm curious to know where you learned your craft. Bagel making itself is an interesting thing. Yeah, it uh, it kind of it was a traveling thing, you know. I was I learned to bake bread in North Carolina, just a little bit of like loaf bread and stuff like that. Then I moved out to Big Sky, Montana, just to pretty much snowboard mostly. Uh-huh. <laughs> then, uh huh. The home of the bagel. So <laughs> yeah, big sc- <laughs> right. <laughs> What's that? Big Sky, Montana, the home of the bagel. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I was there for like four years, and I moved down to Bozeman because I was going to go to uh, take a trip to Peru, and I got a job just for like a month at this little cafe called the Sweet Pea Cafe. And uh, I went in there and got a job. It was like they were making all this crazy stuff, like croissants and like these amazing bagels and all kinds of stuff. So the bagels there were just like this different bagel than I'd ever had. They were kind of like really chewy, super like holy, kind of sour. Mm-hmm. So basically, I, I was baking there. I ended up staying there for a year. I was going to go to Peru, and I realized that I had, there was too much knowledge there for me to pass up. So yeah. I kind of apprenticed there and started baking and stuff like that. Learned there, and then uh, ended up here. Are you originally from Portland, Maine, and that's why you ended no, up? No, no, Pennsylvania originally. Oh, okay. I, I ended up in Portland, Maine randomly from the woman who taught me how to bake in North Carolina. She had been up here. And uh, in between all of that, I went chefing on this yacht, and, like, basically I was done with that and didn't really know what I was doing for a summer, and I called her up to say hi, and she uh, had me come up for a summer job. I love stories like I yours. Know. It's like Josh's adventures in <laughs> cooking. Right. <laughs> Baking, yeah. And, and it's just you just sort of follow your passion at the time, and it led you to... Now, your place has been around a while, more than 10 years, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been in 11 years now. Are you sometimes surprised when you look at the uh, like the people on Yelp or the newspaper articles that oh, just... Yeah. Uh, crazy. People are worshiping to some level the bagels you make there i know it's it's pretty crazy but um i think it's just you know the bagel like we give it the time it needs the fermentation you know it's a sourdough bagel not a lot of people do that these days just because of like labor costs you know what i mean yeah 
it's like if you give it the right fermentation it like ends up being this chewy amazing product instead of rushing it you know you get like a bun basically well patty like a bagel Patty here, Patty Pyburn, my co-host, mm-hmm. knows that I am a sourdough fanatic. Mm-hmm. I love sourdough. <laughs> and so if you can incorporate that into a bagel, uh, that's yeah, a nice Nicole, marriage. Nicole, when she, when he, when he Josh, when you were describing the holy, chewy, soury, she almost fell out of her chair listening. <laughs> yeah. My mouth started watering. <laughs> it really did. And then to toast that, I can just oh. imagine yeah, how it would amazing. be. Uh, so, Josh, I'm curious, because I've seen it on, like, Food Network or something. At some point, it's, like, boiled, right? Or it goes in so water? It's steamed? Yep, yep. Now, we, we mix it, and then we ferment it for, uh, like, six hours. And then we'll cut it out. we we'll pretty much weigh them out, shape them. That's, like, the first shape. Put the hole in it, let it rise again, and then you that's when you boil it. Okay. But you boil, that's what gives it the chewy texture. And then how does it how does it get its outer kind of color? Then do you have to like? Well, yeah. Then you bake it, you boil it, and then you seed it. Basically, you put it in whatever seed or whatever you want. You know, dip it in that, flip it out on some cornmeal on a peel, and then you bake it in the oven for like fifteen or twenty minutes. So I'm curious, what are some of your favorite bagels uh, for your customers? What do they always yeah, want you to make? I don't eat too many bagels these days. <laughs> 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 the customers, uh, they really like the everything bagel that oh, we I do. That. We do just a couple little different things like celery seed and fennel seed in it. You know, Ooh, that sounds good. Garlic? Yeah, garlic. I mean, it's all, all the normal everything, just with a few twists. And then uh, the breath we do buster. like a salt, sea salt, main sea salt bagel that people really love. Ooh, that um, sounds good. And do you actually use sea salt there from Maine? Yep, yep, Maine sea salt. Delicious. And then uh, Asiago is pretty good seller too. I re- oh, I like Asiago. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I, I there's Brugger's makes one that has oh, the, yeah. has it that oh, way. I like that. Gosh. Uh, so, uh, Josh, I'm wondering. I read a quote from you, and I think it was in the New York Times, uh-huh. saying that you are trying to raise the level of culinary knowledge and just food in general uh, for the neighborhood of Portland in which your business operates and you live. Yeah, in South Portland. I mean, I think it's raising, you know, just in general, you know, all around. You know, it's like this, we have a little nook over here in South Portland that's kind of, I mean, Portland itself is just like, there's restaurants everywhere, you know, it's saturated. But there's this little, like, neighborhoody South Portland over here that's just kind of like, there's not a lot of stuff going on over here, you know, so... I don't know. We opened this shop, my partner and I, back in the day, and then, you know, a couple other cool spots have popped up, so I feel like it's kind of a little bit of a movement over here, you know? I like that. What's the population of Portland? I always imagine it in my head, like, around 200,000. I'm not even sure to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've Definitely, driven... it's smaller than Portland West, but, you know, it's, I think it's a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, that sounds about right. I've driven past Portland. I've never actually driven into Portland mm-hmm. because I've always been headed up to Bar Harbor, Maine, yep. or Camden. There used to be a yep. brewery there called Sea Dog I, I like to go to. Yep. And uh, then I've been to Rye, New Hampshire, which is just south of Portland, right? Yep. yep. But, but I've never pulled off and gone into downtown Portland, so I, I don't have a great idea in my head of what it's like but uh the rest of this not south portland but the rest is kind of a foodie city oh yeah yeah there's tons of food going on a uh-huh. lot of amazing stuff happening well so, now we have reason to go to south portland right i say yes <laughs> right. i know That's now, right do you south like your, are you all about the bagel being unadulterated or do you guys do smears or oh what? yeah yeah no we do all kinds of all kinds of smears I yeah. was looking at some of the pictures. Oh, <laughs> they do. Yeah. Bacon, egg, and cheese, I think, is our, probably our biggest seller. Uh, what is it again? The ba- Just bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh, bacon, egg, and cheese, yeah. yeah. Okay, we well, and- it's the end of the show. We've been doing this now for a couple of hours. All of us are sufficiently hungry, and we're going to end it on that. Josh Pataki, owner of a restaurant in Portland, Maine, so Portland East, not Portland West, as he said, called the 158 Pickett Street Cafe. We have a link for you at eatdrinkexplore.com. He makes some of the best bagels in the U.S. Josh, thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Okay, so as we have been mentioning, it is Mid-State Fair time. So a lot of you listening right now will be headed up to the Paso Robles region. Do yourself a favor and head on over to Eberly Winery. They sponsor this hour of the show. And 
You know they have complimentary wine tasting, mm, much like awesome. the play <laughs> for Sideways. <laughs> right. uh, they're located on Highway 46 East in Paso Robles. Another great thing about Eberly is they have cave tours there, voted by Wine Spectator as some of the best on the Central Coast. So why not? You're already headed up to mm-hmm. Paso for Mid-State anyway. <laughs> Stop on in. <laughs> Stop on in. Lots of great bands. I love that about the Mid-State Fair. They have great bands up great there always. Yeah. I saw America years ago in the late 80s. <laughs> And it was a free concert. I think it was one of the best concerts yeah. I've seen. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay, log on to eberlywinery.com. That's E B E R L E.com. Make it a great weekend, everyone. We'll catch you back here next week.